In this question they're discussing a reaction between ammonia and oxygen to produce nitrogen and water vapor and you have to read a little bit between the lines to get that. So they're basically giving you the unbalanced equation which is N3 plus O2 gives N2 and water. And so fairly quickly what you can see is that you're going to need at least two of those and then that blows your hydrogens out to um, six, so you'll need three of those. And then um, the oxygens become problematic to balance. We end up with three on two of those. And that just kind of looks um, sort of weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of multiply everything through by two. And so then that becomes four. That becomes three. <coughs> that becomes 2 and this becomes 6 and you've got yourself a nice balanced equation. So now we're going to set up our ice table and we're given a couple of things. It says that the industrial chemists adds the reactants to this container, right? So it says that they put it in ammonia and oxygen but they don't put any of the products in. So the product concentrations are initially zero and that's always good because we know that it's going to go in this direction and um, we can already start to finish and we know kind of how it's going to change. Then they tell us that they put in 15 moles of ammonia, 15 moles of ammonia and the tank is 50 litres in size so I'm going to do that math and get the initial concentration of ammonia so 15 on 50 <clears throat> and that gives me um, 0.3 of those guys. And then they tell me how much oxygen, it was 11 moles, so 11 on 50, that'll give me the um, concentration of the oxygen, and that ends up being uh, 0.22. Okay, so I've got my um, first row in there, and I didn't round anything because they want me to give the answer at the end, it's just to two significant figures, and Alex can be a little bit of fussy about that. So now what's going to happen? Well, I know it, as I said before, that it's going to go to the right. So this will go up by 2x, and this will go up by 6x, and then this is going to go down by 4x, and this will go down by 3x. Now, Alex has a different way of kind of doing this, but I just use the multiplier for, uh, when they explain the problems. I just use the multiplier from the balanced equation as my factor in front of my x there and it just kind of keeps everything really simple. Now the other cool thing that they give you here is they give you the equilibrium amount of water vapor. You got 6.6 .6 moles and that 6.6 .6 moles again it's in the 50 litre container so we can calculate that 6.6 .6 on 50 and that ends up being 0.132. So we know that 0.132 is equal to 6x, right? So 0.132 equals 6x, so x is 0.132 on 6, and we get our value for x, so 0.132 on 6, and now we've got our x, and it was 0.022. So the good thing about that is that I can go along and update all of my equilibrium values now. So my equilibrium n2 is 2x, so that's just going to be 0 0.044 and then I've got 0.22 minus 3 times 0 0.022 and so that ends up being 0.154 and then finally I've got 0.3 minus 4 times 0 0.022 and then that ends up being 0.212. So I've got everything that I need to go ahead and calculate the equilibrium constant, which is what the problem is asking for. Now it's a really like kind of complex, um, it's going to be a complex structure for the equilibrium constant because we've got these coefficients that are all um, not one. So I want to be kind of like careful and make sure that I'm, I'm not making a mistake. And I always put everything before I enter it into the um, calculator. Uh, before I enter it into Alex, into the calculator twice. So let's think about the KC expression, its products over reactants as normal. 
So it's going to be the water concentration raised to the power of 6, the M2 concentration squared, the ammonia concentration to the power of 4, and the O2 concentration cubed. So I've just got to be careful when I do that not to make an error. So 0.132 to the power of 6 times 0.044 squared, that's my top line, divide parentheses 0.212 to the power of 4 times 0.154 to the power of 3. And when I do that, I ended up with 1.388 by 10 to the minus 3. And you just got to remember it says round your answer to two significant figures. And um, so if I do that, it would end up being 1.4 by 10 to the minus 3, which is the same as you could put it in as 0 0.0014 if you didn't want to have to use the by the power of 10 um, thing there. So that's it. Um, and that is the correct answer. I double check that one. What I think is different about how I do it is I don't use the fractions for the x. Um, and I think just the multiplier for the x is just equal to the stoichiometric coefficient and that keeps it real simple. Okay, good luck. Bye.